Hello, you guys, and welcome back to the What We Said podcast. Happy Friday. It's going to be a great weekend. I can just feel it in my bones. Aries season is here. It's been here for a bit when you're listening to this, but when does it start? March 21st. And when does I it believe. end? April 19th. You're right, right on the edge. Yeah, I am right on the edge. I'm actually a cusp, Aries, Taurus, cusp. Nice. So that's fun fact about me for the day. <laughs> Chelsea's birthday is coming up. Yeah, I am going to be. I almost said 30. I was like, oh, the big 30, <laughs> the big 2-9. No I know, 2-9, almost there. It'll be, I'll start my 30th year on earth. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> technically when you're born, yeah. that's your first year on earth. Yeah, your birthday marks that amount of years that you've been living. Mm -hmm. So you've right. lived 30 years, yeah, when you turn 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 29. How are you feeling about becoming 29 soon? Great. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of an irrelevant. It's like the pregame birthday. Mm -hmm. So To me, it's kind of... It is relevant though, because it's the last year yeah. of the twenties. I feel like that's pretty significant. I was thinking, even though it's not yet thirty. We kind of did this. We well, we did do the same when Rachel went to Europe for you know you got to be thinking of the themes for the parties or of the course. get together. And I was like, maybe I'll have because I will be very postpartum, hopefully by that point. Mm -hmm. um, very low. I want very low key, but like maybe a dinner where we're all dressed in black to mourn the end of my twenties, the last year of my twenties. Nice. So. Yeah, that could be nice. I know. We got to start gearing up for the 30th. I know. Start saving our um, pennies. I was telling Leif how you were saying, you're like, I want to go to Ireland or wherever, <laughs> yeah. Scotland, and do traders. He's like, that would be amazing. That would I was be like, so no, iconic. I really would. That is such a commitment, but it would be so amazing. Mm -hmm. I was saying, though, maybe you could do that same concept, but like in California. Yeah, I'm sure there's places. Because I'm sure there could be a cool castle vibe. You yeah. could rent like an Airbnb 100%. within California somewhere, even if it's a few hours away. Yeah. You know, just because obviously I think getting like a ton of couples or people to mm -hmm. go to. Impossible. I, me, I think you, we can make it happen if it's just girls, maybe. I don't know. I just feel like True. with everyone having kids, if you wanted to do full blown. Yeah. Like couples, that could be harder. 100%. But we can make it. Anyway. We'll, we'll make something work. Literally haven't even been 29 yet. I'm like, <laughs> where's the castle? Skips I'm over your 30th. Yeah. Just starts planning Honestly, mine. <laughs> I'm more excited for this one. Uh, no, we'll do something fun like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell us your really fun, oh. exciting, cutesy little update? Oh, thank you so much for asking. Um, this may be old news if you are a YouTube watcher. I don't know how much I've shared at this point. Maybe I've shared on Instagram or something about it a little bit. But I am getting kicked out of my house. Round two, baby. Round, Round two. two. I love my luck with um, all things homeowner and rentals. <laughs> it's been amazing. So... I've had a I've had some time to marinate with this news at this point, so it's not as shocking as it once was. But basically, just a case of horrible timing. I I've known I think for a while that I've been telling you guys our house, our new house, is not going to be done by the time our baby gets here, and we've pretty much known that for a while. We've known that it would be really tight and that it just likely wouldn't happen, especially because people are always saying don't not even don't trust your contractor, but just like things come up, like plumbing issues will come up or they'll be fixing the roof and this will happen and blah, blah, blah. And it will push back the timeline. So anything they tell you, it's likely going to be longer than that. And when, what my contractor had originally told me was like, like basically right after I was due. And I'm like, if you're already telling me it's yeah. going to be after I'm due, I'm not going to plan on it being ready to move in. This baby's coming home to our current house. Yes. And- you know, even if it could happen, because people were saying, well, you can try and have him focus on just like a room and a bathroom so that you guys can move in. Even mm. if it could happen, they're going to be drilling all day, every day there. They're going to be like, it is fumes. In, yes. Fumes everywhere. So loud. And I just feel like, obviously if we had to, we could make it work. I, but I just feel like moving in somewhere when I'm about to give birth or I just have given birth sawdust and fumes and things everywhere, not having a kitchen. Mm -hmm. I just don't even think it would be a good postpartum experience. And so regardless, I'm like, I was just in my head like, okay, we'll probably stay a few extra months in our rental and then we'll move out and 
move into the new house when she's probably a few months old. That's been the plan. Then I got a text from my landlord very unexpectedly. I had no idea this was even like on the table or she needed the house back anytime soon. And she basically said, I unfortunately need you guys out on this date. And the date she gave was my due date, essentially. It yeah. was literally three days after my due date. And I'm just like, I cannot be moving at that time. So I asked, could we extend it one more month by chance? Is there any way we could extend it one more month? Because if we can, then we'll just move straight into our house, kind of regardless of the situation. Even if maybe it's not fully done, but it's just like, it is what it is. This is we annoying have to timing. Move out now. We, we don't even have the out. choice. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, can we just extend it one more month? She basically came back and was just like, no, unfortunately, due to some circumstances, like, no. So um, we have to move. And at this point, we're probably going to be moving in like less than a month. Um, we have decided that it's better to move a little bit before I'm due and get settled in a place and then have the baby bring her home and live there for a couple months and give ourselves the time and space for our house to actually be done. And then we'll move into the house. That's just what works best. I think mm -hmm. like we had considered for a second, maybe going back to Arizona for a few months and just living with my parents because it would be great to have help and all that with a new baby and stuff. But at the end of the day, it actually doesn't even make sense to do that either because maybe financially it seems like it would be smarter because, you know, it would be free to like live with my parents but then you start factoring in all the other reasons that it would be way more, make more sense for us to stay in California. And it starts to not even make financial sense either because we have to go to our new house literally every day. People are like, Leif could just fly back and like check it out. And I'm like, with how okay, often? that's expensive. Yeah, that's expensive for him to be flying back and forth constantly. I have a new baby. Yeah. It just, and then the podcast, mm -hmm. we would have to either batch a ton, which stresses me out, or do it virtually and, and figure out a setup, which also stresses me out. Yeah. Or have and, to fly back here. Yeah, fly back here to do that with a new baby. None of it is like... And then also, on a personal level, Arizona is the most miserably hot place to be during those months that mm -hmm. I would be there. You guys know how passionate I am about my red lights. I have red lights, uh, red light bulbs in my room at night, and I love how calming red light is. So I'm very excited about Bond Charge. It is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science, inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation, lots of different stuff. So they have blue light glasses, infrared saunas, red light therapy, EMF management, circadian friendly lighting. They can help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. So they have this red light face mask and there's so many benefits to using it. Um, can help with wrinkles and fine lines, a sore jaw, migraines, acne, scar tissue, wound healing, relaxation, ingrown facial hair, and lots more. Red light therapy has been reviewed in over 4,000 peer-reviewed studies with 400 plus being double-blind placebo trials. And not only do these studies show amazing health benefits, not one has shown any negative side effects, which is awesome. The face mask is super easy to use too. You just have to have it on for 10 to 20 minutes each day. You can use it while you're watching TV, cooking a meal, putting the kids to bed, maybe if you don't want to scare them. <laughs> it helps boost your collagen and elastin production. It's super lightweight on the face and doesn't get hot. So don't be scared of that. Bond Charge also has other amazing products such as low blue light bulbs, blue light glasses, EMF protection products, infrared sauna blankets, and 100% blackout sleep masks, all backed by science to help your health and wellness. So you can go to bondcharge.com and use the coupon code what we said to save 15%. That's B O N C H A R G E.com and use coupon code what we said to save 15%. Go check it out. It's all the summer months. It's the worst time to be in Arizona. It's the time that everyone leaves Arizona yeah. if they can because it's 125 degrees. So I feel like being postpartum in my parents' basement with it being so scalding yeah. hot, not wanting to go on walks. I just don't think overall it would even no. be helpful. So it'd be helpful to have my parents help, but my mom was planning on coming to help us anyway. 
So anyway, we're going to move into like a short-term rental for a few months. That's the plan. It's really obnoxious and annoying (laughs) to have to move twice. We're going to move all of our stuff into storage, live in a furnished place, which is not, was not my ideal plan for bringing a baby home to, but I know, and this is the part that I know. Everyone's like, you really don't need much. Like you just need like a bed and a couch and to be with your baby and your husband. I completely agree with that. I think what I've been wrapping my head around is just the mental stress of like mm-hmm. moving and still dealing with my house and the extra expenses that all of this brings. That's more what it is. It's not like I'm like, no, I wanted her to have the cutest nursery right right away. It's like, yeah. I know I don't need a lot. It's not that. It's just now uh, something else added to my plate, you know? Well, and it's just, it doesn't feel like your own because it's not your own. It's not your stuff. So it's a, almost an unsettling feeling to not, regardless if it's more than you need, if it's not your own stuff that you are like, okay, I'm settling down. You just want to feel settled and yeah. like, stable. Mm-hmm. So that's very valid to feel. Even if you were staying in a mansion with a hundred people to help you, it's still not my own your space. own space. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I've just been wrapping my head around that, like around it just not being what I thought it was going to be, which mm-hmm. was just, okay, I'm coming home to like my comfortable space with all my own stuff yeah. that I know this neighborhood where we're neighbors mm-hmm. and we get to go on walks together. And I know. I'm selfishly, like, I'm devastated. Yeah. It just, it's like not what I was expecting. Yeah. And it was very, un- just an unexpected text. And this has happened to us before. So I'm like, really? Again? What are the odds? Last time it was on Christmas. This time it's on the due date. <laughs> I, um, w- we were together when you got the text. All of us, we, we were thrift shopping. Yeah, I was speechless. And Jaycee just goes, the text I just received, you guys, and she reads it to us, and I... Everyone was gagged. Was literally nervous laughing because I was like, this is crazy. This has happened to you twice. I've never heard of this before, where you're just kicked out on this certain date. At least you had a little more time than mm-hmm. the last person gave mm-hmm. you, but still. It was just like, there's that, no way. That's what's hard is the she conven- did... inconvenience of it. Yes, that's what's hard is she did give us time, and it's like... I understand everyone was freaking out. Like all my friends and even when I shared online, people were like, that is horrible. And I'm like, it's just really bad timing because I get it from her perspective. She did give us multiple months of warning. It's not like she was like three weeks ahead. Like you gotta be out and I'm nine months pregnant. That would have been absolutely horrific. She did give us time. It is her house. It's like, but a lot of people were like, were commenting stuff about how a ton of people. And I got messages too about how, California has laws in place to protect renters and essentially like you don't have to move unless it's these few very specific uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. So they were like, you can literally just stay. And like everyone was like, you should just stay because you don't have to leave. And I'm just like, you guys, that's going to add even more stress. That's too much stress. I actually like really like my landlord. I have a good relationship with her. I just think it's unfortunate timing. Like she's not a horrible, malicious person. She is just like sucky timing for everyone involved. And so I'm like, I'm not just going to, well, I'm just going to be like, yeah, I'm not leaving. And she's like, that would just stress me out so bad to be yeah. like, to know that I'm not supposed to be there yeah, not supposed and to you be have there a new baby and I have a new baby. I'm just like, I got to go. It's better to I just d- go find somewhere to settle down. Exactly. Then when you move into your house, oh, it'll be the best day of my it's life. It's your house. No one Until can kick you out. Until the previous owners come out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we <laughs> Until think. they're over every day. No, I'm kidding. Mm. Oh yeah. So that's the current situation. That's the life update at this point. It sucks. But it'll be fine. But it's, it's not the end of the world. And truly the more time I have to like sit on it, I'm like, it's fine. It's really not the end of the world. It's It's just just so abrupt. Yeah. That's the hard part to deal with when it's so abrupt. You're Mm -hmm. like, oh, that was not my plan. And again, especially when you're pregnant, you just want to feel stable. So I'm like, I don't want to go do anything crazy. I just want to stay here and- (laughs) nest literally no and what's weird like the birds we learned about last week or tuesday it it's just it's crazy to me because i was realizing if you renovate a house you pretty much have to do something inconvenient like this like Mm -hmm. you have to either because in my yeah because in my head i'm like okay great another expense like we already have to pay rent we already have to pay for the mortgage and the renovations but it's like what other choice do we have other than if you have family that you can live with or like mm-hmm. friends that you can live with for free, which yeah. is, I know a lot of people do that. If they like are living in the same place as their parents, they'll move in with their parents, which yeah. makes sense. But like, we don't have family here. So yeah. we don't have that option. You can move in my spare bedroom. I, no, people literally were like, what about Chelsea's room? I'm like, please, <laughs> us both with newborns crying all night. 
<laughs> and then a toddler in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> and I, my spare bedroom is so tiny. I mean, you're obviously welcome yeah, too. No, and I but. and I was telling Leif too, I'm like, the thing is we know we're so blessed. We have friends around us. We yeah. know if we legitimately had to, we could stay in someone's yeah. room. We have multiple people that would allow yeah. us to sleep if we needed a bed or something. Yeah. yeah. But you know, whatever. So it's I just was so different because of the situation. If it was just you two for like a month. Yeah. But when you bring into, you know, the picture that you're having a baby, it's completely different. It is. And yeah, I was just realizing the renovation thing. I'm like, that is such a, like, you just obstacle ha- anyways. Yeah. It's like anyone who buys a house you and you can't live in it. If you're completely tearing it down, like you can't live in it while mm-hmm. you renovate. So you have to find somewhere else to live. And most likely that means you're paying rent somewhere. You're yeah. paying, it's just a super expensive time unless you can, like I said, live somewhere else for free. But even that, it's just an inconvenience in your life. Like you have to make a sacrifice. Yeah. Whether it is the sacrifice is not having your own space and living with family or the sacrifice is paying more to live somewhere else or moving multiple times. Jeez. And like, anyway, so I'm like, I guess this was just inevitable. And it just happens to line up with the pregnancy. And so it's like, oh my gosh, but it will all be worth it. And it will be the best day ever to move into that house. It just oh makes gosh. your house even more. Yeah. Just probably. Exciting. Going to be such a relief. Yeah. To be in there knowing no one can kick you out. I know. I know. Life's like, well, it's the last time it'll ever happen. I'm like, it's that's true. true. I was, I was telling Sayonara Chelsea, I'm like, landlords. imagine, because you've kind of, you've like done a lot to yeah. your house now. And that's kind of how we were in LA. Like we had actually done quite a Mm -hmm. bit. We had like changed out light fixtures and done a lot and lived there for two years. And I was just telling her like, now imagine your landlord calls you and is just like, hey, you have to leave in a month. And you're like, what? Yeah. Like you just aren't expecting it at all. No. When it's- It's so jarring. Especially when it's a house. It's like one thing when there's apartments and it's like, you kind of have this feeling when it's apartment, it's not yours. But when you are renting a house, you have this weird feeling of like, it's kind of mine. I mean, I know I don't own it, but- I'm doing things to it to make it my own because it's like the house I'm living in. Yeah. So it's even more shocking. Yeah. Yeah, I would be devastated. I would literally be sobbing for days. I know. I was sobbing the night that it yeah, like, I would happened too. or the night that it was confirmed when I was like, can we do an extra month? And then the night she was like, basically, no. I was just like sobbing and Leif was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? I'm like, I'm not well. I'm and pregnant. I, yeah, I'm pregnant and I'm realizing how much I also just like love this house. That's Mm -hmm. what I was saying. I'm like, I really, I really love it here. And I feel so comfortable. And just like, this is what I was expecting. We were about to get together, like, or kind of make a little makeshift nursery happen. And like, I was organizing for it. And I'm just like, okay. So yeah, throwing away all of the thoughts, plans, and ideas. Like now we have to completely pivot. Mm -hmm. I think it was just a jarring feeling, but I'm doing better now. And I think it'll be fine. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's my long winded. Jeez. Moving update. It's so crazy. I can't believe that. I really can't. It's too shocking. I know. Well, today we are um, reading some stories for you guys. Scandalous college stories. And I hope they're juicy. I hope they're scandalous. We Me too. did not go to college. Well, we went for two days. I went for two days. I went for a year, actually. Sometimes I forget that, that I went for two semesters. Um, that seems like another lifetime. When I think about my past just eras, who was that girl? Me walking through the halls of a university, like taking classes and submitting papers. Well, who was she? That's also a, a an experience that we did not share, like no. together at all, where, you know, I can picture you in high school. I can yeah. picture you. I lived with you while you were going to school, partly. Uh, for a little bit, yeah. Um. But I can't, because I did not go to college, yeah. like I cannot picture me you in, a college, in class. the college classes. Like me that's neither. Not, that's not the Chelsea that I can yeah. visualize. She was sad. <sighs> it was, she a, was, going it was it. a hard time. She was going through it. Talk about, I feel like college is even more so the time where you're just like, don't know what's going on and you're trying to figure yourself out. No. I feel like that's even more than high school. Yeah. Not that you know who you are in high school, but I think- this is just completely, I guess my experience is like, I cared less though. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not overthinking all of the areas of my life in high school. I feel like college was like that time period, at least that age. Mm-hmm. It's like when things start kind of hitting the fan and getting real and you're like, 
who am I? What am I doing? What's the point? What am I? I'm on my own. I'm on my own. Who do I want to spend time with? Who do I want to be? What are my hobbies? What do I want to prioritize? And it's like, you're having to make those calls. And I went to school. Well, one of my semesters I did at a community college in Arizona. So that didn't even really feel like college to me. That felt like, I mean, I did the full semester, you know, but I I was still at home and still seeing the same people. So it just felt like an extension of high school. But when I went to a university for uh, a semester, I, I don't feel like I had the regular university experience because I went to Utah. Yeah, it's and so different. it was not party time. I mean, I went to parties all the time, but not those kinds of parties. Like, yeah, wasn't raging, staying out super late. It was more like dating. Yeah. Everyone's dating everybody all the time mm-hmm. instead of partying. And just the things, I mean, I was like going to concerts all the time and like meeting different people. And I genuinely like disassociate from that version of myself. I'm like, who was that? It's, it's so a hard, weird. it's a hard time. Yeah. It's a pivotal a lot changes yes. in that time so i'm interested to see what these stories bring i we don't even really know like where these are gonna go i know we are going to take a quick ad break to talk about the nike indie bra and the universa legging we are so excited about this sponsorship we've both been wearing nike gear since we were teenagers for any sports we were in or physical activities we always know that we can rely on nike So how do you take your breaks? Do you go for a walk or a workout class? Do you like to meal plan, run to the grocery store, maybe grab coffee with a friend? You can do all of that and more in style with the Nike Indie Bra and Universa Legging. The Indie Bra now comes in three support levels, low, medium, and high. I personally like a high support, secure feeling bra for when I'm running or doing a cycling class, but I don't want to be wearing that all day. I like something lighter with thinner straps and smoother edges for running errands or doing things around the house. And luckily, the Nike Indie Bra has both of those options and a medium option for the in-between. All three are so soft and look so flattering on. The Nike Universal Leggings are perfect to pair with the Indie Bra. They really help smooth and lift, stretching freely with your every move. Wherever your workout takes you, their squat-proof, mid-weight, and finished smooth fabric gives you uncompromising comfort and feels cool and sleek to the touch. Plus, they're durable enough for you to flex, wash, and wear again and again. They're the pair you'll reach for whether you need something for your everyday run, everyday practice, or just every day. Find your feel with Nike bras and leggings that deliver supportive flexibility and comfort for whatever your day brings. Shop now at nike.com and that will be linked in the show notes for you guys as always. So you want to start? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've been waiting for this one. They say our school had a student serial killer last winter. This kid got expelled. So he decided to kill three people in the span of five days before he got arrested. Google UC Davis serial killer 2023. <gasps> Love you girls. Hearts. Um, three people in what? five days what because he got mean? expelled. What did he do? Well, I guess we could Google it, but that is absolutely terrifying. I thought that serial killers were kind of a thing of the past. I was really hoping for that because I feel like with, I was really hoping for that. I was because I feel like with modern technology, like you we will catch be them. You will be caught. And so yeah. I feel like it's a really rare these days to, like, I haven't heard any stories like that where it's like, oh, that we can't find them and they've killed like 10 people. I, not that this is not a huge deal because it is, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, I'm surprised we didn't, I didn't hear about that because I feel like that's yeah. pretty crazy to, to kill a few people in a short amount of time. And it's like the same person. Obviously he did get caught, mm-hmm. but I just, I don't hear about that. I feel like it's I, old school. I actually just saw something that was saying how we don't realize that there's still ser- like so many serial killers out there and they're they just don't getting away them. with it. Yeah. Cause you can't connect them or there's no bodies. There's no evidence. Like if you don't have a body, you can't really like put them together, link them, you know? Right. But oh, um, I hate that so much. Yeah. They were saying you just don't hear about it because first of all, there's so many atrocities going on. So you, they're just all jumbled, whatever. Um, some of them are, some murder cases are, you know, really pushed in the media, but they are saying there's actually something you don't know is that there's actually lots of serial killers still on the loose. Oh, great. So don't That's worry. It's good to know. Don't worry. Stay on your toes. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I hate that so much. I mean, there's just more people in the world now. They were saying back then it was just more like sensationalized yeah. or like crazy, mm-hmm. but it also was less technology. Like they could get away with it. More. Oh, for sure. For sure. They're going, you're going to get caught faster these days yeah. with all the stuff we have in place, all I the cameras hope. everywhere, mm-hmm. all the, 
DNA and the, you know, technology we have to just, I don't know, see the tiniest yeah. details. They didn't used to have that. So I feel like it was more no. Definitely easier, shock. probably. Yeah, that is Gosh. beyond terrifying. Wow. Okay, at my university, there were a few men's sports teams. I remember specifically rugby and baseball were involved that had a private Facebook group with it where they all allegedly reported on the girls oh, on no. campus that they slept with. Oh, Their goal no. was to see how many of them they could, how many of them could sleep with the same girl. Oh, an object. Amazing. <laughs> I hate that so much. No, imagine you find out you're on that page and <sighs> like the guys who you think like, oh, I'm just like really popular guys, like really trying to hit on me. You're just like a game. Wow. A literal number to them. Bye. Cool. I oh, hate that. that is so disturbing. What sports did she say? Rugby and baseball. I knew. I knew that second one was going to slip in there. <laughs> no, nothing against baseball players, but allegedly allegedly they cheat the most they're the worst allegedly <laughs> I, I would just kind of suck to be like a baseball player and be like cool that's my reputation yeah i wonder why that's the stereotype like what's the reason baseball over i don't know it's not, it's not even necessarily that they cheat the most just that they're like the worst overall okay the worst people I, I don't know i don't know any baseball players so i'm not speaking from experience that's what i've heard on the grapevine through the grapevine makes sense we used to have any, sorry, any athlete, like I, I can't even speak to a specific sport. I just feel like if you are a professional athlete, they're not professionals. They're mm -hmm. in college. If you're a very good athlete or <laughs> you are a professional, yeah, I feel like it just gets to their head mm -hmm. and they think they can literally get away with anything. Yeah. That's why they cheat so much and they travel so much. But I, yeah. I feel like those things are just a recipe for disaster. A guy exactly. thinking he- Same thing with like musicians and famous guys. Right. Most of them are not faithful. Loyal. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. We used to have zip tie parties where you'd be zip tied to a date and you both had a, a fifth of liquor to finish. I don't know what that is. To finish before you can get unzip tied. Goodbye. You, you, yes. You stay zip tied when one of you has to pee, which is often when you're drinking. You stay, they said? Yes. He stays up tied. No. As you can imagine, everyone gets insanely uncomfortably drunk. I did this my freshman year and completely blacked out, slept on a dog bed, woke up the next morning and went to my 8 a.m. class with puke in my hair. And no, I don't remember throwing up. Not proud of this at all. Yikes. That, so do you get a pick who you're zip tied to? Because if so. you don't, Ew. I would be shooting daggers at whoever but was like But if you do, signing. kind of a vibe. Yeah. You're like- it's like seating arrangement. Yeah, you're like, I have to be with you. That first day of school and you get the seating arrangement and you're sitting next to your crush and you're like, thank you. Nothing Mrs. better. So -and -so. Or if you're sitting away from all your friends and your crushes, you're like, do you hate, what did I do to you? That is the worst. The worst. I'll and all your friends your are sitting room. by your crush. You can like hear them all <laughs> joking. You're just like, oh my gosh. <sighs> oh, I forget if high school had like seating arrangements. Some classes did. Or if you did. just kind of sit wherever. I remember we got in trouble a couple times. We had to be moved away from each other. For we chatting. Mm-hmm. In what classes? In math. I don't want to say his name. I almost did. Pumpkin bread guy. He loved me a little too much. He? he actually, he like loved me. He really did love you. <laughs> he That's getting sketchy. Get us in trouble. I would be the one turned around talking to you, but he and would I move would... you. <laughs> Great. But he he brought me. I can't he, think of his name. He made. I wish you could tell I'll me. tell you after. He made pumpkin bread for everybody. Slices. He would, he would make this delicious pumpkin bread and like bring it for a student. That's, if it was a woman, I wouldn't care, but. And then he reason. was like, I asked him, I was like, can I have pumpkin bread or something? And he was like, yeah, come get it. And he like brought me into the teacher's lounge, gave me a full loaf of the pumpkin bread. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Wow. He loves me. Have you, One I'm of the only to, teachers to do that. Not I was not usually a teacher's pet. Bring down the mood oh, great. severely, but have you seen all the stuff about the quiet on set documentary? Yeah. So I, this is, that'll be old news at this point. It'll be out for a while, but like it's a newer documentary. I, I don't know if I can watch it. I don't know if I can either. I've essentially watched the whole thing on TikTok at this point. I feel like I've seen a lot of clips, but not, not, I'm not alleging that the teacher yeah. did anything inappropriate because he, he yeah. never did. He was nice, but I'm no. just saying that was reminding me of it because it's all about like Nickelodeon stars mm -hmm. and the people, child actors, child actors and people doing sketchy stuff to them. And I just... So oh, it's disgusting. so sad. Yeah, it's so sad. It's so sad and so disturbing. 
<sighs> Especially because we grew up with them. So it's like looking at our childhood through a different lens. Like and our hurts. childhood shows and just... Like knowing what was going on behind the scenes yeah. of them like making... I know I saw this TikTok. It was so sad. It was like they gave, gave up their childhood for us to have ours. Oh. And I was like, I'm sobbing. And it was like all these videos of them like acting and doing all these shows and obviously we love we that love them we up. ate them up yeah, yeah. and then they're sad. going through so much behind the scenes and it's mm. so sad amanda Bynes is my roman empire oh. like i love her she gave me so many good shows she she put out the best movies like An i was icon. obsessed with her she was so funny and ugh, i just i saw this comment it was like they took their they took her spark like it was oh. showing all these old footages of her and i'm like protect that girl with everything she deserves the world i hope she's happy it's but. so so sad i know i really love her too her tiktoks recently <laughs> have you seen her oh she's like i'm wearing hey wigs guys. i'm not wearing wigs anymore <laughs> she started putting <laughs> extensions in let me know if you like it bye guys <laughs> a sleigh okay love the honest like the clear communication truly the updates that we mm -hmm. actually do care about <laughs> yeah, shockingly. Yeah. we do want to know if we do want to know um, this just happened and was on national news, but my college's chancellor was fired because someone found his porn accounts and videos online. He had only fans, porn hubs, sexy cooking shows, books, you name it. And he is still fighting being fired. Cooking is a great way to unwind after a long day, but sometimes going food shopping, trying to get it all prepped, getting all the ingredients can be super time consuming, but we found a better way with Marley Spoon. This podcast is sponsored by Marley Spoon. Marley Spoon knows that bland food is boring, so they created the best tasting meal kit that money can buy. And with our code, what we said, you can get up to 25 free meals. With Marley Spoon, you can choose from over 100 delicious recipes every week from Cajun spiced chicken to poached salmon to butternut squash gnocchi to a vegan burrito bowl. And many of their recipes are completely customizable. So whether you're looking for vegetarian meals, family-friendly dishes, or low-carb options, Marley Spoon has the food you want to eat. They also have an in-house registered dietitian who actually assesses every recipe. So it takes the guesswork out of eating healthy and you're no, you know you're eating good. It's one thing to cook for yourself and have to decide what to eat for dinner, try and keep it healthy, you know, not even just dinner, all of the meals. But then you get married or you have a partner, you have to cook for them and you're, well, you don't have to, but <laughs> <laughs> you both are cooking. Um, you both have to figure out what to eat and then you add kids into it. Oh my gosh, I can't even begin to describe sometimes how drained I feel by thinking about, you know, what meals, how to make them healthy and delicious so the whole family enjoys it. And Marley Spoon saves the day. They also save you from making the extra grocery haul with their online market of pantry essentials. So you can shop their selection of 125 plus items like seasonal produce, ready to eat options, meal shortcuts, extra proteins, and handy snacks and easily add them to your next Marley Spoon box. So with meal planning and food shopping taken care of, making delicious food at home has finally become effortless. Plus, with Marley Spoon, you aren't locked in long term. Marley Spoon's flexible subscription allows you to edit, pause, or cancel your boxes anytime. So experience the most personalized meal kit with Marley Spoon. Head to marleyspoon.com slash offer slash what we said and use the code what we said for up to 25 free meals. That's right. Up to 25 free meals with Marley Spoon. One last time, that's marleyspoon.com backslash offer backslash what we said for up to 25 free meals and make sure you use our promo code what we said so they know we sent you. Go check it out. Wait, they found it on his work computer or they just found porn I think he's on in his them. computer? Oh, he's in them. Porn accounts and videos online. Wouldn't you think? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't right. think you could get fired over I was like, like okay, watching Okay, so porn. he watches porn like- I don't, I've never heard of someone getting fired for watching porn. But he had OnlyFans. Oh, he has an OnlyFans. I think fans. he himself has, like, I'm pretty sure he's the one. He's the, Okay, he's Can he do fan. that? Like, is there a law against that? Um, I don't know. Please, Sexy why is that? A, if it's a girl, is it a girl or a boy? His. That determines he, my bias. Because I'm like, that's disgusting. No. As a girl, I'm like, get your money, My girl, girl boss. <laughs> no, I know. Um, that is no, that's, shocking. You got to choose one or the other. You can't be a teacher or someone who works. Wait, what's a, I actually do not know what a chancellor is. Is that I, like a... Uh, I just think it's some kind of administrative position. That's what I'm guessing too, but I don't know specifically. What Sounds like means. something from Harry Potter. Leader of a college or university, usually the executive or ceremonial head of a university. Yeah, I guess Not that's the photo getting, being from the 1800s. 
That's what I was going to say. Chancellor. Literally, Chancellor. So, so. Okay. Sounds like, yeah, something from Peaky Blinders. Or whatever. <laughs> okay. One of the sororities at my school, and I think other schools do this at the, at the sorority too, locked their pledges in the basement in their underwear in the pitch black for 24 hours, covered even the slits at the bottom of the door so <gasps> no, no light gets in. That is Wait, terrifying. I'm terrified. That's traumatizing. That is like, that's like um, solitary abuse. What is it? Solitary confinement? Sol- you go crazy. You would literally go crazy. Complete 24 darkness. hours. That's not okay. Complete darkness in their underwear. Treating them At like that point, animals. it's like, okay, you're in it. your underwear. Well, I guess for well, your own com- uh, comfort wise, if you're yeah. cold or something, I was going to say for humiliation, it's like no one's seeing you. You can't, not a speck of light is in there. Yeah, but I feel like that's so dis, like that's so uncomfortable. Yeah. To be like in your underwear on like a ground, the ground or something. Yeah, no beds. No, like what? Nothing? We're making that up. I'm like, no beds, no, no food. No, literally. Probably. That's what it sounds like. I can't imagine it being a really pleasant experience by any means. That's terrifying. I'm confused why people want to be in sororities from these stories. Of like what they have to do to get there. I know. Is it worth it? Like, geez. I had a professor sophomore year and then was doing a project that included him my senior year. One day during a meeting with other people, he leaned over and whispered in my ear, you have aged like a fine wine and gave me a wink and then continued the meeting as usual. Now, this is reminding me of a personal experience that I had. Um, not really, but literally two weeks ago. You've Leif aged and like I, fine wine? Not you've aged like fine wine. Actually, quite the opposite. But <laughs> this this old guy got in the elevator with Leif and I. Mm-hmm. And um, we like held the door open for him. And he's like, oh, thank you, whatever. And then it was just us three in the elevator. And in the elevator, he looks at me and winks. Like when Leif's not looking. Like Leif's kind of turned to the side doing like pushing the button and he looks at me and winks and he's like pretty old. Like he has like a thing. Okay. And I'm like, mm, I didn't love that, but like it was giving kind of yeah, a little bit creepy. Like it wasn't grandpa. like sweet grandpa vibes. He was like kind of winked at me and I was like, I do not like that. And he, then he proceeds, this isn't a real new one. He proceeds to ask, is this my son? Leif, is Leif my son? He's like, he's like, he looks like a teenager and you look, what did he say? How old did I look? I can't remember. What? But basically like you, oh, what did he say? You look mature. He's like, you look mature and he looks like a teenager. Like, is this your son or your brother? I said, oh, this is my husband. And he's like, oh, oh, I shouldn't say that. I should keep my mouth shut then. Yeah, you should. I'm like, that is a real new one, sir, because Leif has a mustache. Yeah. I have never once been told like, you look like a mom of a teenager. Like it would be. I mean, no one's ever said that I look like his daughter. I don't know. It yeah. just would be like, oh, maybe brother and sister would be the only thing I could picture if we both look young or something. But I'm like, Leif does not look, he said Leif looked 14 years old. <laughs> has <laughs> not a, like 16 or 17 or 18, 14. Has a full blown mustache and facial hair. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. I was what? shook. I was literally stunned beyond words. With not the him wink- trying to like, demean late yes. to like get you exactly and being like you're mature he's like you're mature you deserve a real man like me exactly one who's got a walker i was shook i was like okay stay bye. away from these children you're like literally 30 yeah trying to make life seem like yeah who's this young and immature he's like he looks like a boy i'm like cool <laughs> we were both shook i'm like that's a new one i have that's never weird. heard that bizarro mm, very bizarre not sure if, is it my turn? I think so. Not sure if I can name him, but a celebrity came to perform at our college row week and he slept with a sorority girl. Mm. He was married at the time. Oh. The sorority girl took photo evidence of mm. her in his bed and then got kicked out of the sorority for joking about it. Yeesh. And he probably got no consequence. It was amazing. Yeah, of course. I'm sure that's not his first rodeo as well. <sighs> I wonder what celebrity... How do you get away? How do you think as a celebrity you're going to get away with sleeping with people? Like probably because people do all the time. Now, I think now in the last couple of years. NDAs. I wonder if probably. a lot of guys like if you have to sign an NDA. Yeah. Before you're like around them. I'm sure. I'm talking big celebrities. Yeah. Because like, yeah. I feel like lately or in the past five, ten years. If a celebrity isn't with it, with technology, they might think they can get away with more. Mm. Like Adam, 
um, Levine. Yeah. Oh, what happened with DMing that? DMing girls. He apologized and they came out together like. Him and Bahati are still yeah. like married and stuff. Yeah. She came out like in support of him and he apologized, whatever. I don't know. Mm, but yeah. things like that where it's like, are you stupid? Yeah. You're actually you're, the dumbest you're person. You're giving people evidence that you don't know of you cheating. From your main account. Because I bet back in the day when they're younger, when they first come up on the scene in the early 2000s, no one's no going to one snap a picture. It. Yeah. No one can track them. No one has, you know, proof maybe um, as much as you can have proof today. True. So- that's why I feel like these older guys get caught. True. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so my Christian college got caught up in a scandal because I guess students were organizing orgies between classes. Oh. One girl tried to expose what was happening to faculty to try and stop it, and her orgy partner murdered her. Oh. That is not where I thought the story was going. Wait, what? Insane. Also crazy because now the guy who created and founded the school years ago is getting charged for sexual abuse. Oh. Amazing. Whoa, 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 whoa. She, yes. so she like snitched essentially and got killed? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's horrible. Her orgy partner mur- murdered her. What is an orgy partner? I thought one an orgy was, was multiple people. I think it is, but maybe that's the main one. Like your you- safe person? <laughs> Well, yeah, not apparently feeling too not. safe. Apparently not. It's Please. not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> Her safe space. Eesh. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's horrible. beyond. Orgy between classes. Yeah, that's feeling. That's when you have. So where are you doing that? In a yeah. classroom? That's pretty bold. Yeah. Um, okay. The Christian, uh, the Christian schools, or I mean like. When someone that's in charge of a church or a Christian school gets charged for sexual abuse, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah. I mean, anyone that gets charged for that is absolutely disgusting, obviously. But I feel like specifically when it's like a religious institution or yeah. something like that, it seriously infuriates me to no end. It's because so hypocritical of what they enforce preach. on other people. Yeah. Yes. And it's so oh, creepy. It's so beyond creepy. I hate. I hate, hate it hate. so, so much. My university had naked parties. I was in the art program, so I actually went to one with a figure drawing theme, okay? Everyone had to take a turn being the model. The rest of the time, you could either be drawing or just socialize in another room, but everyone was butt naked the entire time. It was surreal. That that doesn't sound too bad. No, it's like kind of freeing because it's like, what? We all have bodies. Like, who cares? Uh, Yeah, and plus this is, you know, sounding artsy. You're painting each other. That sounds like a very regular thing. You, You a lot of times you'll bring in like a naked model or something like that. You're just doing it. You're just leveling the playing field. It's so just interesting all naked. how today's society has, it's, it's just, it's just weird how we all have bodies. Mm-hmm. Like we all are, are naked at our core. We all yeah. have bodies, but it's so shocking to see someone, someone else be naked. Yeah. Like, isn't that weird? It how weird. I wonder how much, well, obviously, it just was normalized back then and in different cultures. It kind of still is. But it would be interesting to go back in time. Yeah. And see, like, how comfortable they were just... Because, obviously, they still, I feel like, a lot of times had, like, like cloths over yeah. themselves a little bit. But it's like, where did that originate? Where did the need to be like, oh, we should cover up this area and this area? Yeah. Like, what... The private areas. Like, what, like, what started that? I know. I don't know. That's a good question. Adam and Eve. True. I don't remember. I don't remember as if I've <laughs> been alive for thousands of years. I, I don't can't remember, remember the that first far back. people according to the Bible. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I've seen lots of different historical things where even in um, England, like the queens and kings at the time of, I, I don't, I'm not going to guess the time period. Yeah, time period. But um, times when you would think that they were super modest, that girls would wear things that like their boobs were hanging out. Like they would, or have like one, like their favorite breast, like out. Okay. So like they would have it, you know, perked up, which you'd be like, oh, I thought they were super, super modest because they'd wear the long, long dresses. Yeah. But people yeah. have been having naked bodies for forever. And I've said this, but even on multiple trips that I've been on at like beaches in Australia or um, specifically the places that come to mind are Australia and Italy. I have seen so many topless yeah girls and it's like very they're normal. all 
they're usually not like naked. I haven't been to like a fully nude beach or something, but yeah, they will be full on like playing volleyball, completely topless, like five friends, girlfriends. Yeah. And it's clearly not weird to them at all. No. Like, they're just used to it. And I'm like, that would be shocking. If you saw that in yeah. California, I, again, I'm sure there are certain beaches. You would think beaches. it was like a special club or something. Yeah, there are certain beaches. I'm sure that you, that that's the point mm. or whatever. But like, if you were just on a casual beach and you yeah. saw like five girls together topless, you it would be like, so shocking. Yeah. Crazy. Well, people here are creepy, so they would probably make it weird. <laughs> hey girls, love the podcast. I always look forward to listening each week to and from work. This happened a long time ago, but one of the frats that is no longer on campus got kicked off for hazing. This happens to a lot of frats all around the country, but this specific frat pouring bleach down a kid's throat and it burned his esophagus. Oh. He had to go through major surgeries. It was super <gasps> sad. What? On what are we talking earth? about? What? Are, oh. Where are the parents? What is going on? Who are your parents? Like- how are you pouring bleach? I am beyond. <laughs> I'm beyond that poor kid. That sounds so sad. That is horrifying. So painful. So unnecessary. So bizarre. Okay. I hate that. FSU has underground tunnels that go between the frats and the sororities. Okay. Mm -hmm. T they were apparently built like a hundred years ago, back when sororities and frats were literal cults. They built them apparently to have secret meetings. They are now called the Ted Bundy Tunnels because it's rumored that Ted Bundy found out about them from talking to drunk kids at the bar and used it to not be seen. I'm scared of that. Something that I'm never going in is an underground tunnel. Oh, you will never catch me in a tunnel. Ever. You will never catch me underground. Ever. Okay, you guys, we have a new sponsor of the podcast, Posh Peanut. Your kids grow fast, but that does not mean that they have to outgrow their favorite items after only a few months. Posh Peanut gets it, which is why they make super stretchy and colorful clothes that seem to grow with your child so you'll get longer wear out of those adorable styles. They have lots of both boy and girl clothes, and I feel like they have a lot of fun patterns that kids would just be obsessed with. I saw this really cute little pink leopard swimsuit, matching little hat. Obviously, I was looking at the girl stuff. But Posh Peanut makes thoughtfully crafted, beautiful and stylish clothing for kids and families designed in-house from beautiful florals to your favorite brands such as Hot Wheels, Disney, Hello Kitty, and Barbie. Their pieces are made with ridiculously soft viscose from bamboo that stays soft even after you wash them over and over again. I obviously do not have my baby yet, but I have heard a lot of my mom friends talk about bamboo and how just soft and stretchy clothes made from bamboo are. I'm excited about that. And their high quality fabric is four times stretchier than cotton. So it grows with your child. It's also breathable and chemical free, which means they're delicate on your baby's sensitive skin. Posh Peanut is made for infants and kids, but they also have sizing for mom and dads if you want the whole family to match. And if you're not a parent, consider this the perfect gift idea for any little one. And Posh Peanut is loved by over 1 million parents and also adored by all your favorite celebrities and influencers. We can't say their names, but if you know, you know. I will give you guys a code in just a second. You guys can go on their website and check out all the different patterns that they have for babies and toddlers. And they also have some really cute like beach towels and blankets. So right now, Posh Peanut is offering our listeners 20% off your first order with promo code what we said. Go to poshpeanut.com slash what we said and use promo code what we said for 20% off your first order. That is poshpeanut.com slash what we said promo code what we said. Check it out. I don't even like the subway. I saw, oh, I think we talked about it on the podcast. I am forgetting the details now. Remember that girl who made a TikTok about the underground tunnels in Paris? And she was talking about how like, what? like there are underground tunnels in Paris that people will like, if you know someone, they'll be like, oh. For what? To get I, from A to B? I don't or remember. To yeah, hang. maybe back in the day or something. But I can't remember. But basically she was saying like, you can so easily get stuck down there. There's like no lights and you, or you can get start to get like confused and you'll literally die down there. Terrifying. After watching, what is it, Us? Which one? I By Jordan know. Peele? Yeah, I think so. The one where they have like the doubles that live under the, yeah, the tunnels? Yeah. <laughs> that movie. So scary. So scary. That ruined tunnels or anything like that for me. Ever. Even subways. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared down here. I know. Under that the movie, ground. What, that movie cha altered my brain chemistry. It actually is. It's actually a great movie, it's but it's so good. terrifying. It's so scary. All of his movies are just 
really good. Yeah. Actually, there's one I didn't like, the most recent Ooh. one. The one with the horses. Nope. Did you ever see that one? Is it like Nope? I think Nope. I didn't see that one. It wasn't my favorite. Mm. Short version of the wildest college scandals I've ever heard. Of the wildest college scandal I've ever heard. During my sophomore year at a Christian college, the president was removed from staff and banned from campus because it came out that his wife was sleeping with college boys while he would literally sit in the corner of the room and watch. No, no, no. Then they turned their scandal into an entire Hulu documentary. Ew. That is a mental illness like I've never heard is when couples do things like that and they're both in on it. In on it. How are you both that sick and twisted to be in on a weird situation like that together and be okay with it? No. You're not okay. And that's obviously why you are together actually is because you're freaks. Eh, not college kids. (laughs) Leave them alone. And again at a Christian college. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think I heard about that documentary actually. Really? I wonder what like, oh, I got that. <laughs> no, I, oh, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, I think I heard about that documentary like a couple years ago. I maybe. feel like I have heard of Sounds it too. Familiar. I wonder what it's called. I need to look it up. I actually get really, I mean, Into as I stuff. mentioned, <laughs> like, now that sounds cool. <laughs> I get so, I get really disgusted by documentaries like that. They make yeah. me feel gross. No, like, I can't watch them anymore. When I watch even, I'm very fascinated by cult documentaries and things like that. I think they're so interesting, but every time after I watch it, remember that one that I was telling you about on the podcast where it's like, they would cut them off from their family and mm-hmm. then they would, some of them were like changing genders because the, yeah, the cult leader told them one. to. Yeah. That genuinely made me feel sick for a week. I'm like, I wait, know. I cannot believe that this happens in real life. I feel like, yeah, my brain chemistry sick. is being altered and my sense of reality is being warped. I hate this so much. And it makes me feel sick to my stomach. I know. I can only handle so much. It's like, I think it's good to know that these things happen, but not all the time. It's like, I, I don't need to know every sick documentary out there, every sick situation. It's just too much. No, It's a lot for the brain. Only handle. exposing me to, you know, only expose me to certain ones. Periodically. As, yeah, periodically. Exactly. Yeah. I go to Oklahoma State, and two nights before the OSU versus Texas Big One Championship game, a group of frat boys put a dead longhorn that said F, like F-U-C-K, F-H, F-H is the abbreviation for farmhouse, on their rival fraternity's farmhouse lawn. That was a lot of words. It was an insane controversy and was covered by national news and the police went to the Greek neighborhood to investigate at the fraternity and eventually arrested the four frat boys who put the dead longhorn on the lawn. It all goes back to a long line of prank wars between the fraternity AGR and farmhouse but ended with serious controversy and controversy and the risk of the boys who did it being expelled. The fraternity being kicked off campus or having social probation. Good. I'm glad they were in trouble because that is not... That's not a prank. No, that's, that's not so a prank. beyond. How, yeah. Wh- Can we, should we ban sororities and fraternities? Like, should does, we ban pranks? Do things like this still happen? I'm getting so confused. Yeah. Like, please tell me that was a long time ago. Cause that is just. Oh no, she went two nights before the OSU. She's speaking as if it was like when during she was her there. time. Goodness She's gracious. like, I go to Oklahoma State. But maybe it's like a distant memory or or not memory maybe it happened a long (laughs) time ago like i think you made it up like hmm. you're lying (sighs) that is rough oh my gosh geez i didn't know these were gonna be so heavy yeah i thought we were getting into some like we're dead animals sheesh okay this is my last one i was on the pan hellenic executive board for one of the biggest sorority councils in the nation and fraternities were constantly bribing the people in charge and those people ex- accepted the bribes every time. The council also had huge ties to local news networks and law enforcement, so nothing would ever get out of the horrific things that happened as a result of the toxic fraternity party culture. In my time there, I knew at least five people who passed away because of it. I even had to attend a donor walk of a freshman girl who was overserved at a fraternity house. The way fraternities can get away with anything, and sorority girls cannot even post with a single drop of alcohol. So true. That's <sighs> so sad. See, again, they can just get away with so much. So much. <sighs> you got to have, you know, maybe they can keep fraternities, but they got to have a chaperone or something. Like a very responsible adult that lives with them and watches over them. Literally. Because <laughs> apparently they need it. Apparently these 
I don't even call, call them men. These boys are wild in. Yeah. And has devastating consequences. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like a lot of these are about sorority and fraternities. Mm-hmm. It's like get when that you get many. any group of yeah. people together, I don't know, especially at that age. Yeah. Not to freak you out if you're in college. Maybe we'll do happy college stories. Best. I hope, hope you guys are feeling <laughs> hope good. you enjoyed. Um, <laughs> no. People who are about to graduate <laughs> high school and go to college. Like beware, serial killers, dead animals. Seriously. Chancellors. Goodness. The chancellors, the longhorns. Goodness gracious. Um, well, thank you guys so much for writing in and sharing your stories with us. Thanks for always being a part of these story episodes. You are the only reason they can happen, obviously. And we really appreciate it. So if you want to be a part of any upcoming story episodes, you can follow our Instagram. We always update and ask for stories and stuff there. And it is at what we said podcast on Instagram. You can watch us on YouTube. Just look up what we said podcast. And yeah, you can subscribe anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, whatever you choose. Thank you so much for being here. We love you. And that's That's what what we we said. said. Bye. Bye.